Hi everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Today we're gonna take a look at how to turn a loose floral watercolor piece into a tileable pattern. So for this we're going to need paper, watercolor, brushes and just some inspiration. I am using the Arsh hot press paper but any would do. Um, if you've got cold press paper on hand that would also work very well. I went for a more blush toned lavender sort of color palette with a contrasting green to kind of bring everything together but if you'd like to go the monochromatic route that would also work. Basically anything goes. A few days ago I watched this Shada Campbell tutorial which I will link down below and I loved working on it because she's teaching uh, her viewers how to uh, create these loose florals and it was just a very enjoyable exercise and I liked it so much that I thought it would be great to create a seamless pattern out of it that could be applied on a range of products from wallpapers, sketchbook covers, bedding, you name it, you can apply it on anything. So I wanted to film a tutorial and share with you how to turn this floral watercolor theme into a nice pattern. I went with a range of blush and pink tones lavenders as well to bring everything together um, and a contrasting green. So I started my bouquet with an open peony type shape. I didn't really plan it in advance, I didn't want to plan it in advance, I wanted it to be kind of just intuitive, just you know the old go with the flow <laughs> type exercise and I, I love doing that. It's not something I was used to doing, I'm more of a structured kind of person when it comes to creating artwork. I sketch things in advance, I have reference pictures and I, I, I analyze reference pictures but this time I kind of wanted it to come you know from somewhere else. So I went freely with a lot of water in there just letting the paint flow, just putting shapes to paper. Started in the middle with a nice big open peony sort of shape and then gave it a bit of height with some other floral elements like lilacs and some foliage and variations on smaller types of flowers with rounder petals and I think that worked really well. You maybe have a specific set of flowers that you would like to paint and, and that's perfectly fine if you want to do it that way. This is not really a tutorial on how to paint florals but if it's something you would like to see from me in the future please do let me know. I will speed through the process of painting this because I would like to skip to the part where I show you how to cut up your piece and how to rearrange all the elements and create this sort of blank space in the middle where you can and add in your design. Um, hope this still makes sense in a minute. Right, so now that you've got to a point where you're happy with how your bouquet looks and it's all nice and dry, you will want to cut your piece of paper in four equal parts, like you see in the video. You don't have to be super exact with this, because we will be scanning it into Photoshop later on and stitching everything back together and, and going over potential imperfections, but you would still want to get it to a point where it's kind of even just to make it easier for you when you uh, carry on painting the next part.
once you have all four pieces of paper all laid out, mark them as you see on the screen. You'll now switch number one with number four and number two with number three and this will create this nice blank space in, in the middle of a, your rearranged bouquet. Go back to square one, uh, go ahead and um, make up a new bouquet idea. You can just repeat the same sort of floral elements with slight variation if you'd like to or if you just can't, you can just come up with a completely new set of flowers. Do try to keep them in the same vein just for continuity purpose. And once you're done and your four bits of paper are completely dry, you can go on and scan your painting with whatever you have on hand. Is it a regular scanner, a multifunctional printer? You can even photograph them if you don't have a good enough scanner at hand. I do recommend you go for 600 DPI or more if you can. If not, bear in mind, if you're going to use this on a product, that is large, like if it's an our bed sheet, for example, you will want a high enough quality image so that when it's blown up, it still looks okay. With the technique I'm going to show you in the next video, um, you will be able to alter the scale of your pattern so it would fit, you know, various dimensions of paper. But more on that next time. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here soon. If you like what you see and if you'd like to support me, please subscribe, like this video, hit the notification bell and follow me on all my social media. You'll find the links down below. Thanks. Bye.